Hello and welcome to News Break at 7. We'll have a special focus on Karnataka and Telangana over the national debate on caste census. But first, the big story as the battle for Telangana heats up. Prime Minister Narendra Modi hit out at BRS Chief and Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao. His comments could set the stage for a face-off that could pitch the regional satrap against the national leader in a personality clash. Speaking at a rally in Telangana, the Prime Minister claimed that KCR had expressed his desire to join the National Democratic Alliance, but that he rejected it. He said KCR had approached him after the Hyderabad civic polls. Remember, the BRS has claimed it's equidistant from the BJP and the Congress and is battling both the parties in a three-cornered assembly poll later this year. Let's listen in to what the Prime Minister said at the rally in Telangana. हम भी एनडीए का हिस्सा बनना चाहते हैं आप हमें एनडीए में शामिल कर दीजिए मैंने कहा आगे क्या बोले हैदराबाद में म्युनिसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन में हमारी मदद कर दीजिए मैंने केसीआर को कहा आपके कारना में ऐसे है मोदी आपके साथ जुड़ नहीं सकता है the political implications of that statement could be very interesting in the state of Telangana in the run-up to the Assembly election. Joining me now is my colleague Uma Sudhir as well as senior journalist Pulla Rao. My first question to you, Uma, how is the reaction from BRS been to this? Because the BRS has consistently reiterated that it's equidistant from both sides despite allegations from the Congress that the BRS is a B-team of the BJP. Quite an explosive comment made by the Prime Minister on a public forum claiming that KCR came to him and asked to join the NDA and had in fact praised his administration and that he had rejected entry to KCR and also adding that that made uh, KCR angry but he came back and again said that he's going to hand over the mantle to his son KTR and that he had actually questioned KCR saying that if this is a democracy and that uh, this is not a, a kingdom where you can hand over uh, your kingdom uh, to your son, you're not a king to hand over. So all that very embarrassing and the BRS has not yet officially reacted. Uh, we only had a spokesperson saying that this is a lie that the uh, Prime Minister is saying. Of course, there may be no way of really checking because we do not know uh, who else would be present in such a meeting between the Prime Minister and uh, the uh, BRS uh, Chief, uh, the Chief Minister of Telangana, KCR. But interestingly, this would actually, in a sense, pitch the BRS against the BJP. In a sense, the narrative once again will become BRS versus BJP. BJP. And that could actually harm the interests of the Congress because the anti-BRS vote, in a sense, may go to the Congress. Actually, that's what Revan Reddy has been saying. Even after the Mehboob Nagar meeting, he said that the BJP is acting like a B-team of the uh, uh, BRS and trying to split the anti-BRS vote. And today, the Prime Minister, in fact, they turned the tables on both these parties by saying that because... Uh, he is, uh, claims that the BRS or KCR had bankrolled the election of the Congress in Karnataka and now it is payback time uh, for the Congress here in Telangana and that's why they are going to help the BRS uh, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the disadvantage of the BJP. Two right. other uh, interesting points that he has made politically, which of course are also related uh, to the issue of caste census, which we perhaps will di discuss right. uh, later in the uh, That's uh, right, Uma. Program. We'll play, yeah. we'll play what the Prime Minister said about the caste census. It's extremely interesting. We'll also take the Karnataka angle. But first to this comment, Mr. Pularao, how do you see this playing out? Uh, this could potentially put the BRS in a delicate position. And as Uma says, the calculations and the ramifications of this could be very interesting because the BRS has positioned itself strategically as one that is equidistant, at least in terms of optics from the BJP and the Congress. One thing definitely, as Uma ji has said, it is embarrassing for the BJP, for the BRS, KCR, that the Prime Minister has said this openly and it is a sensitive time like this. But, you know, I think the Politics there are really very, very, uh, you know, very hard. I, all these allegations have been going on about each other, corruption, everything for the last 10 years mm. against KCR. So I do. I wonder whether it will affect his base. I okay. wonder whether it will in any way diminish his voting base. Yes, it's embarrassing. Now KCR will have to come out and say, I did not say that. Congress party has already said he must have said it. They are together. The mad man Manik right. Tagore is also already talking, uh, talking about this. But in the end, 
I think this may blow over because all these uh, kinds of uh, alliances, secret talks, that and this, they go out. And okay. mainly the question will come, why at this moment? Right. Why did the Honorable Prime Minister suddenly decide to diverge at this moment? Okay. That also comes into the fore. Therefore, we, I, I don't know. I believe it will be embarrassing, but it will blow over and may not have as deep, you know, this would calibrate issues. This will not go and sway voters away from here and there. Okay. Perhaps 80% of the voters have already made up their mind which way, which of the three ways to go. And it will create a lot of noise, definitely, in the All next right. few days. It, it will and create it a lot of noise, but while this may blow over, one issue which will not blow over is the caste calculation. The PM also reiterated his position at the caste, uh, on the caste census at a rally in Telangana. Let's just listen in. My family, the Congress has started a different way of doing it. The Congress says that जितनी आबादी उतना हक मैं कहता हूं इस देश में अगर सबसे बड़ी कोई आबादी है तो वो आबादी गरीब है और इसलिए मेरे लिए गरीब ही सबसे बड़ी आबादी है और गरीब का कल्याण यही मेरा मकसद है सो इंटरेस्टिंग कमेंट्स देयर नाउ while the INDIA alliance, uh, the Congress has demanded a national census. Remember, Telangana, uh, we still don't know the fate of potential census that was uh, announced in 2021. Uma, does this debate around the caste census put the DRS, BRS in a delicate position? No, in fact, the Prime Minister has hit multiple stones with multiple birds with the one stone, I must say, because he's done three things uh, by, uh, by talking about the caste census. He says the Congress must explain whether they are uh, agreeing, yeah, they have demanded that the uh, quota rights will go along with the population. And he has for the first time spoken, in a sense, indirectly about delimitation and saying that because the population of the South is low, their number of seats are going to be less. So are they going to be anti-South? That's a... That's that's a question that the Prime Minister actually raised at uh, today's meeting, saying that because the South has less of a population, uh, are they uh, going to disadvantage the South for having okay. been good on the population count? Uh, two other things. Yes, you spoke about uh, caste in Telangana. And here, uh, the BRS, uh, rather the, uh, uh, the government here, uh, which was called the TRS government in 2021, had passed a resolution in the State Assembly asking the centre to conduct a census in which the OBC category would also be taken into account. Today, Revant Reddy, the PCC chief, has in fact written to the chief minister uh, an open letter where he says that the BCs being more than 50% of the population, not just in the country, but in Telangana as well, are being disadvantaged. And okay. he has raised, the, there is a, a family survey, there was a comprehensive family survey that was conducted by the BRS government in 2014. And he says, make that document public and then you will be able to give the rights of the BCs. I must tell you that because the BRS has already announced its list and they have announced only about 22 uh, candidates who belonged uh, belong to the uh, BC category, uh, OBC category, and the rest of them uh, uh, are now the Budhiraj community, which is part of the BCs, are uh, unhappy with the BRS for having done that. The Congress list has not yet come out. Uh, right. the con uh, when I met Revan Reddy, he specifically said that we are going to give at least 34 seats, uh, tickets to the uh, BC community, whether uh, that will really work out. That is something that we they would want to showcase in front of the audiences or the public in uh, Telangana to say that we have given at least a dozen more seats to the BC community more than uh, right. what uh, uh, what the BRS has done. So that's a brownie point that they'll score. Of course, ultimately it'll be just to on expand the, the debate, of Uma, the seats just that, to, uh, just that to broaden the, the debate, will be uh, just to broaden the debate and take it across to neighboring Karnataka as well. It's not that straightforward an issue as far as caste census is there for the ruling Congress government there. The Karnataka government is yet to release a socio-economic caste survey data that was compiled in 2018. Given that both Chief Minister Siddharamaya and Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shivkumar are both strong OBC leaders, navigating the caste census report may be a tricky exercise even for the Congress. Pratibha Raman has this report. 
with the Bihar caste survey data being released. The question in Karnataka is if the state will release its caste census data that has been lying dormant with the OBC Commission since 2018. It was first initiated by Siddharamaya when he was the chief minister in 2014. Due to technical issues, it never became public. We are almost uh, in the uh, final stage. Once it is uh, completed, we'll submit to the government. Maybe the end of November we'll be able to submit. 163 crore rupees was spent and 80% of the houses in the state were included in this survey. The survey which began in 2014 came under scrutiny in 2016 for lack of data. It was corrected and completed in 2018, but then it was deemed technically incomplete due to lack of approval from the member secretary. Due to this reason, this survey report is on hold since 2018. The Congress government of Karnataka is under pressure because Rahul Gandhi has been advocating the need for caste census. The JDS is in favor of making it public, but its ally, the BJP, is not. It is a retrograde step. It is not a progressive step. You be good education, good health care, good governance, development, corruption free. This language they should speak, not trying to divide the society. Amongst the other southern states, the Telangana Assembly in October 2021 had passed a resolution seeking caste-wise census. However, it's not yet taken off. The chairman of the OBC Commission has said that no government has asked him to submit the report after correcting the flaws. It is reportedly believed that this report, once made public, will challenge the dominance of the Lingayats as well as the vocal Ligas in the state. With camera persons Kumar and Govind, Pratibaraman in Bengaluru for NDTV. Professor Sandeep Shastri and Chandan Gowda also join us in this conversation, uh, as well as Uma Sudhir and Pulara, who continue to stay with us. Uh, my first question to you, Chandan, very quickly, what would be the thinking of the Congress at the moment or why would it be delicate for it to come out with the data of the caste socio-economic survey? Veera, the, the pressure from across the country to push for caste census is so strong. There is no deferring the releasing of the caste census report. And like you showed, Jay Prakash Hegde, the you know, chairman of the Backward Classes Commission, he said by November it will be out. So there was some rumor that there was opposition to making the findings of the report public because it showed the Lingas and the Vokaligas to be, you know, to have a smaller proportion of the population. But we should see the report before saying anything more because it's not just about how many they are. It's also about how they fare on the income ladder. Please remember, we are different uh, caste communities, religious communities are asking for different share, shares of the backward, you know, the 27% OBC reservation, those claims are better settled with data of this kind. So I don't think there will be hesitation now from the Congress, at least in making it public. Even the JDS wants it. It's the BJP oddly uh, that doesn't want it to be made public. And it's uh, counter doesn't seem to be convincing. It is saying, let's give education. Why bother with these statistics? Mm. But I think the statistics will be important. And the moment has come that it, we can't defer the release any longer. Okay, before we go back to uh, Professor Sandeep Shastri and focus on Karnataka, just a very quick question to you, Mr. Pularao. How do you see this caste census conversation and the demand play out in Telangana? You see, definitely there is a huge OBC community. But there is one thing you should remember. The OBC is not like the scheduled caste or scheduled tribes where there are three or four communities. There are 50 to 100 communities. And in these communities, only five or six communities get representation and say Telangana or Andhra. So their other immediate demand is categorization of the OBCs. Once the census report comes, that demand has to be addressed. Or just saying backward class OBCs are so much is not going to play out. Like in Bihar and other places, you will have to have a national categorization of the OBCs. <coughs> will the OBCs agree for that? Will the dominant OBCs agree for that? So that question also has to be addressed. 
Perhaps the country is ready for such a thing. We have to see when it came out in 89-90 during V.P. Singh's time. We thought it will change everything. It has changed things to some extent. So therefore, I believe that they will accept it. But then what about categorization? That is the demand of all the smaller BC, OBC communities who have the numbers, but they don't have any representation per se, mm. either in Karnataka or Andhra or Telangana. Right. So, Professor Sandeep Shastri, from a specific southern point of view, I know we've discussed it from the Hindi heartland point of view, from an all India point of view, but from a specific southern point of view, in a state like Karnataka or in a state like Telangana, what would be the ramifications of this demand? Do you believe, like Chandan Gowda says, that the Congress would be in Karnataka would be perfectly okay with releasing the findings? Yes, I would uh, endorse the point that Professor Chandan made that the Karnataka government in keeping with the wider policy that the Congress and the Alliance is following would want to release it. But then in Karnataka's case, would it be an arrow or would it be a boomerang is the question. Mm. And why do I say that? I think there are two issues involved. One, uh, the survey was uh, completed five, six years ago and certain corrections were added. And now if you release it, uh, those opposed to it will immediately say that uh, we'll raise technicalities about this, mm -hmm. that this is more than six, seven years old and there were problems then. So that would be one aspect which would uh, shroud it in a little controversy, which uh, the Congress will need to deal with. Mm -hmm. Secondly, and I think more importantly, the point which Chandan referred to, mm -hmm. when the unofficial release in a sense or the media got access to that report, that report clearly showed that the two dominant castes of Karnataka, their numbers are actually in terms of percentage is down. Mm. And these are two castes which have had more than 50% of the MLA since 1956. Mm. Now, if these two castes are going to be shown as having a lower percentage mm. and both the communities have been claiming that our numbers are actually mm. higher. Now, that would again be an embarrassment for the ruling party for the issues it raises. Finally, Vera, another small point, if you heard the Prime Minister's uh, speech in Telangana today, he started off by saying, Mere parivar jano. So I think there was a message in that, you see, the family he's trying to talk about and he went on to talk about the poor. Now, are we looking at a debate which looks at the economic versus the social, mm -hmm. whereas the Opposition Alliance is talking about caste census and the social dimension. Uh, the Prime Minister is trying to talk about the economic dimension. Mm. This is a new uh, twist that is coming to the debate that you are seeing that is playing out. Right. Uh, so, I'm just again broadening this debate, merging both Telangana and Karnataka in this conversation, running out of time as well. Quickly, Uma, from a KCR persona point of view, how will this play out? Whether it's the KCRs, BRS or Congress, the OBC quota bringing in and linking it to the population is going to complicate matters for them and going to prove to be political hot potato because of the simple reason that, yes, uh, the OBC category is not uniform. Like Mr. Pulara was mentioning, there are some hundred different communities which come within that and their socio-economic profile, each of them may be very, very distinct and different. And to be able to give reservation to that group will actually... Uh, right. uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, topple the apple cart for the other politically strong, significant cast which are seen as winnable candidates as of now by these parties. And yes, I agree with Mr. Shastri that, uh, you know, the Prime Minister seems to be bringing in a new element here and talking about poverty as the class and not socioeconomic rather than caste as the basis. And perhaps that's the reason why he's in a sense directly, uh, you know, in a sense, that's the, that's the retort that he has to give to the Congress bringing in Abadi as the slogan for right. giving the hug of the people. Back to you. Right. Uh, so, so, Chandan Gowda, this may, this may be a narrative that's confined to the Hindi heartland, not so much of an impact on South India. So the impact will be of a different kind, Veera. Please remember... We didn't have to wait until VP Singh to discover the OBC category here. We've had backward class reservation for decades, and it's sort of a settled matter. So this will unsettle it in some ways. It won't be a radical jolt. But what will be interesting, Veera, is if we know that the number of Dalits is more than we thought they were, the number of tribals is more than we thought we were, that'll, that's already been speculated. So there'll be a higher you know, proportion of the reserved constituencies for them. You know, higher proportion of reservations being asked for them. 
that ramification is also something we need to think of but the supreme court's limit of 50% will again will have to be revisited in the light of the new findings not just here everywhere else mm. we'll have to see how it pans out right uh, so my la quick last words to both uh, sandeep shastri as well as mr pularao uh, while while it's easy to make the demand the consequences of it nobody will be able to estimate whether it will be a boomerang or an arrow uh vira as i said i think it will be sorry please, please go ahead mr pularao please 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 go ahead professor shastri uh, uh, as you rightly said what is going to be debated in the next one year in the elections i think is very different from what will actually possibly implemented this yes. is going to be an election issue which both sides will try to take the maximum advantage of okay. how does the implementation happen i think that's a totally different ball game but now i think the focus is how do you make it an electoral issue to be able to gain uh, the voter advantage mr rao final word to you i i i think this sounds very good but uma ji may agree with me it won't change the dominant caste domination in telangana karnataka or anywhere else these numbers will be played around but they will not have an impact because the seats will be won by the dominant caste so anyway it may be a good thing to do but it will not have immediate political effect all right on that note uh, thank you all for joining us uh, obviously very interesting times in telangana we'll have to wait and see how the personality clash how the caste dynamics play out in that state in the run up to the assembly elections as well is in karnataka how it plays out in the run up to 2024 that's all we have time for on the show the news continues here on ndtv